Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Heights. I'm also the founder of Prep Athletics, where I help basketball players uh, connect with the right fitting prep schools. Just real quick, uh, some quick house uh, housekeeping. If you like this and do not want to miss an episode, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And this is also featured on all major podcasting platforms. If you do not want to miss it, uh, go ahead and subscribe and I'll be in your inbox uh, every time a new episode shows up, which we try to make about once a week. Okay, thank you for tuning into that. Now to introduce this week's guest, it is Coach Dan Haynes, who is the head prep basketball coach at Lee Academy, based out of Lee, Maine. Uh, after graduating from Daniel Webster College, Dan joined the coaching staff at SUNY Cobbleskill, and he's also coached at Hartwick College before he joined Lee back in 2016. So Dan, welcome to the podcast. Awesome. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure as well. Uh, tell us real quick, where did you grow up? And um, of all the sports, why did you pick basketball to coach? Let's see. Uh, I grew up I grew up in New York. And first off, the second I tell anybody I'm from New York, or they hear I'm from New York, automatically the city, you know. So, uh, but no, I grew up in upstate, upstate New York, uh, you know, about two and a half hours outside of the city, two hours from Syracuse, almost kind of right in the middle. Uh, and I grew up in a town that was real small and there was not a lot going on. Wasn't actually a whole lot different from where I'm at in, in Lee. And, you know, the thing was, is I had a good, a good group of friends and all we wanted to do was play sports. You know, that's what we did year round. Uh, that was, it was, it was nonstop, uh, you know, didn't matter. We, we, we were soccer, basketball, and baseball, but we were playing, you know, basketball, like my core group of friends, basketball was the, you know, the game that we gravitated to. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't, I wasn't able, the town I grew up in, I wasn't even able to start playing organized until seventh grade. We had no youth programs and it was just really crazy. We were one of the smallest school districts in New York state. And between my ninth and 12th grade years, we were, I want, I think it was like 97 and eight mm. uh, as a high school, which was, you know, impressive, but it was just, it was that same, it was just that core group of like seven or eight of us, a couple of buddies, you know, year, years older than me that, you know, that, that, that's all we wanted to do. And that's what, you know, that's what college ended up becoming to me was, you know, was okay. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to play basketball. I want to be a part of basketball and it just, I just fell in love with the game. Every, everything about it, it, you know, it, it just, you know, it's a team sport, but you know, there's, there's a lot of individual stuff that goes along with it. And, you know, I, I enjoyed kind of that grind too, of being able to go just be by myself and, and, and be able to work on what I was doing and, you know, and then, and then coming back to the, you know, to the team aspect of the game and, it is. It's just, it's, it's a beautiful game and it's, and it's been very, very good to me. So. Did I notice on your bio though, for college, you played more than one sport at Daniel Webster. I did. I did. And that's, and that's actually one of the reasons that I ended up choosing to go there was uh, it was funny because on my first recruiting trip uh, for basketball, I ended up meeting up with some of the baseball guys. It was, you know, it's a smaller school. I ended up meeting up with some of the baseball guys and I actually ended up meeting up with some of the soccer guys uh, my sister had actually gone there. She was a senior there my freshman year. And that's how the, uh, you know, the, the basketball coach had, had actually asked my sister, cause she played basketball. If she knew anybody back home in New York, you know, any good basketball players, she's like, well, my brother. And uh, so, yeah. So when I got there, I actually ended up talking to some of the other coaches and I played, uh, played soccer and, and baseball, soccer, basketball, and baseball did that. I wanted to just focus basketball my first year. You know, so I did that my first year, then uh, did all three sports, sophomore, junior year. And then uh, unfortunately, uh, I got hurt during soccer my senior year. So I wasn't able to play basketball and baseball, you know, to finish it out. But it uh, definitely kept me busy. <laughs> yeah. What was that like? Because kids have so much time restraints just playing one sport and you were playing three. I can't even imagine. 
Yeah, it uh, but it was it was that lifestyle that I was used to in the sense of when I was in seventh grade, you know, in high school, we we had soccer, and then it was as soon as soccer was over, it was basketball, and then in the spring it was baseball and you know AU basketball, and so I was just used to that kind of grind of you know, hey, when this sport ends, this one picks up. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, that's why I kind of chose that smaller school was because they were they were allowing me to play that. You know, the basketball right. coaches had no problem with me, you know, playing soccer because they knew I was coming day one practice. I was in shape, you know, and I was also still able to I was still also able to make all the preseason basketball workouts. And, uh, you know, I was able to you know kind of commit myself to it. But it's one of the reasons that, you know, I feel like I was able to do well in college because, you know, it really helped me with my time management. Because Absolutely. You know, you're especially when you're going year round and you're in study halls, you're you're lifting, you're in practices. Sometimes I'm doing two sport practices in a day. So after you're doing homework, there's not much else you want to do but sleep. So you know, it was, uh, you know, it, it was interesting, but it was it, it was a blast. I, I I enjoyed being able to do that. Yeah, that's great. Now tell us about Lee Academy. Uh, we are coaching now. Give us your elevator pitch. Why why should a kid come to Lee? And the, the, the biggest thing here at Lee and, and the number one thing that I tell every kid that I recruit is, and, and, and their families is, I'm not promising you anything as far as a scholarship, you know, I, because I, I don't have the scholarships. I'm not the guy that gets to hand those out. So I can't, I can't sit here and say, hey, if you come here, I, I guarantee you're going to get this. But what I do promise these kids is that I'm going to give them an opportunity. I'm going to give them opportunities to play in front of the coaches I'm going to give them opportunities to get better because the big thing for us here is, is there's no distractions. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else. And, you know, a lot of people here, you know, Oh, you know, it's Northern Maine. It's, you know, it's, we're, you know, we're four, we're four hours from Boston. Uh, you know, we got a, we got a good size airport an hour away where, you know, we're not, we're not that far away from, from the rest of the world. Um, but we're far enough away to where, you know, the focus here is, you know, that the, the town is the school. And I tell the kids, you know, hey, you got three buildings you got to take care of. The school, you got to, you know, you got to make sure your academics are in order, that you're taking care of your classes, that you're studying for, you know, any tests that you have to take, whether it's the SAT or our international guys, the TOEFL test, whatever you need to do, you got to make sure you're taking care of that. Then you need to make sure you're taking care of the gym. You know, when that, that, that you're getting work, you're getting work done. You're, you're in the weight room, you're, you're getting extra work in. And, and, and anytime you're in the gym, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing to get better. And then in the dorms, making sure you're resting, making sure, you know, same thing, you're studying, you're eating right, you're doing those things. And if you take care of, you know, if you go 0 for 3, you're probably not going to last here very long. Mm -hmm. You go 1 for 3, it's going to be a long year. Two for three, those are those those guys can you know make it do well. But you go three for three, you take care of every one of those things. That's what sets you up for success. And you know, kind of being here, you know, it's setting up, you know, for us, you know, it's a smaller scale, you know, kind of college atmosphere. And that's what we kind of try to create here is, you know, that college atmosphere of, hey, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to be in the gym, you know, three, four times a day. You're going to go to classes. We're going to have study halls. And we're going to occupy some, you know, a lot of your time, but that's the biggest thing that kids struggle with when they go to college is that time management. And, you know, cause when you leave, you know, when you leave home, you're going, you know, you're going off all of a sudden you get a lot more free time than you've ever had. So understanding how to utilize that, that, that free time and balance personal life with what your goal is, you know, is big. And that's what we kind of try to get our guys to do here is you know giving them good habits that they can you know take with them when they leave and you know and then the other big thing is is the individual attention uh you know obviously you know when you're when you're running team practice you're working on you know offense defense everything's team oriented you know there is time for you know some individual stuff there but the way that guys get better individually is outside of those practices and, you know, we have a lot of access, you know, to our gym. We don't have to, you know, we don't have a lot of competition for getting in there. So, you know, we're able to get in the gym and put in hours and, and then that's the real grind. And that's what, you know, everybody says, you know, Hey, oh, I live for basketball and basketball junkie. And Hey, this is, this is the perfect place. If, if, if you live and breathe, you know, hoops, 
this is a perfect spot for you. And, and, and so far, you know, we, we've done pretty well. Yeah. And that's, that's good. You say that Dan, because there are a lot of prep schools out there. Cause you guys are obviously there's a lot of differences, in, you know, among everybody. And there's some where academics are very serious. So you might only have two to three hours a day in the gym and then you're back to the books at night and your situation is unique as to where your kids have plenty um, not that they're not doing academics, but they have plenty of free time to get in that gym, get in the weight room. And there's no distractions. Like there's no town to walk to. There's no, um, there's just, it's just, it's not a big place. I mean, I know this because I've been there five times uh, <laughs> to check on my guys, check in with you and Igor and everything. But that's a good thing if you're doing a postgrad year for nine months, right? That's exactly yeah, what you want. That's why is, is, you know, and the, and the big thing, and I tell my kids this on day one when they get here, you know, get on campus is a little ego check here, guys. You know, remember the majority of you guys are here. You're you're doing a post grad year because you didn't get what you wanted as a senior. You know, so you got to put that. That's got to be right there. That hey, there's something missing. So you can't come in here thinking, you know, a bunch of high majors are gonna, you know, walk in the gym and say, "Oh, we've been waiting for you, bud." You yeah. know, and 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 you have to have that mentality of. I got to, I got to grind and I got to work. And, you know, like you said, we're, you know, our gyms, you know, we open a gym at five in the morning, you know, so, so guys have the opportunity to get in there at five, you know, and then we're, we're in school till, you know, about, you know, two, two thirty, And, you know, and then we're right back in the gym before dinner or, you know, or we have our study hall period before. And then afterwards it's back, you know, it's back in the gym. And, you know, like you said, there's, there's, you know, there's a food truck, you know? So, so unless you're hungry, that's, that, that's all you're doing for walking. You know? Let me ask you this. So those are the benefits of being geographically isolated is all the time you can spend on academics and basketball. What are the challenges with being in the middle of nowhere? Oh, uh, some of the challenges are probably one with, you know, it is with recruiting, um, you know, with recruit, cause you know, a lot of times you, you know, they'll hear, you know, where you're at or how, you know, how far you're away. And then all of a sudden it becomes, you know, uh, oh, I, oh, I didn't realize it was, you know, it was that far. Um, and then that's a thing that I have to have, you know, conversation with parents. I say, oh, well, I didn't realize that location, you know, was, was a thing. So if your kid decides to come here, I'm only going to tell the schools within an hour radius that they're the only ones that can recruit you. Right. You, know, you, wanna, you know, you didn't want to travel. And that's another thing that I, that I kind of turn that, I, I, I try to turn those, not negatives, but those things that kind of look a little bit more difficult, um, you know, into positives in the sense of, hey, you know, you know, this, your kid's going to go away for four years, probably going to go a little farther away. And when, you know, if they can come here and, and focus and, and do what they need to do here, that's going to set them up for when they leave. And that's, you know, occupying the time in the sense of because there's not a lot going on around here, you know making sure that the, that, that they, they can get in the gym or that, you know, we can, you know, get downstairs and watch film or do something, just making sure that there's always something that, you know, that we can do. Uh, because I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm so involved with my guys 24 mm-hmm. seven, you know, I mean, last year I was, you know, we were cooking dinners, you know, you know, my, myself, my associate head coach doc, and uh, you know, ended up with two assists last year, you know, we were, we were cooking dinners for guys. Uh, you know, in the dorms and, and, and we're just, we're so involved with our guys because of, you know, like I said, that we're, you know, where we're at, there's just, you know, we're what they have. We're the, we're, we're entertainment, you know, in the sense of, Hey coach, you know, what's, what's the schedule today? What do we got going on? Um, and, you know, the travel, uh, you know, to places, luckily, you know, the harder prep basketball is New England. So, you know, we're, we're, we're not that far out of where, you know, the heart of this thing is. Uh, so sometimes scheduling can be, uh, you know, a little, a little difficult, uh, you know, getting teams to come here, uh, you know, is, 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 is what's tough. Um, you know, but thankfully we got, you know, we got, you know, some really good teams that, you know, will, that, that like to come up and play us. And, you know, I guess I just, you know, we as a team got to go beat a couple of these teams, you know, in order to be able to say, all right, Hey, return to Lee next year. Give us one. Oh, uh, you know, so that, that, that does have its challenges and, and, you know, and recruiting wise, it's, you know, it's a little bit, you know, 
timely and, and costly, you know, to be able to get to some of these events, you know, and things like that. So, you know, that does, you know, add a little bit to it, but, you know, at the same time, we're still, you know, we're in that pathway for, you know, for coaches that want to come recruit, you know, like our fall workouts. And also I'm, I, I work well with, with, with the other coaches in the league um, because we're able to kind of coordinate with the college coaches too. Uh, because at the end of the day, we all want our kids to go to college. It's mm-hmm. not, it's not a battle, you know? Yeah. When we're on that court, we're trying to win a game and, you know, we're doing that, but we all, we, we all understand that we help each other out. You know, when, when everybody does well, we all do well. And so, you know, having those relationships and having those coaches, you know, be able to say, Hey, you know, uh, we, we want to come see you in Bridgeton. Can we, you know, what works and, and, and the school here is so flexible with, you know, what we're able to do because, because we are, you know, a longer trip for a lot of college coaches. So I basically tell the coach, you know, and they say, Hey, one of your fall workouts, I say, you tell me when you can come in, you know, if you need us in the gym at, you know, cause, and that's what has, sometimes they fly into Bangor, they'll stay there and then they'll be in the gym at, you know, 6am. So we got to be ready to go at 6am. You know, some of them there, you know, we're the last trip of the night and they're flying out of Bangor to leave, you know, so we might be in the gym at, you know, eight, nine o'clock. And that's the other reason that we do a lot of morning workouts and we do a lot, you know, night workouts too, because I want their bodies used to that. Because if I I get a coach that calls me, you know, on Wednesday and says, Hey, I'm going to be, I'm going to be there Friday. You know, I could be there Friday. What time can you, you know, can you go at six? That can't be the first day we're in the gym at six o'clock. You know, when we got a coach in the gym, Uh, you know, so being flexible and, you know, we have to be because of, because of where we're at. Um, but like I said, the school's very good with, you know, with, with, with working with us and, and making sure that our kids are, you know, able to do what they need to do to, to move on. Now you talk about getting coaches in there. You place kids at every single level. What is your recruiting strategy with your kids? Does that start once they sign with Lee and they commit to come there? Are you starting working with them or is it when they show up on campus, you start figuring out how good they are and who you should start reaching out to? Yeah, oh, really, it's, you know, once they once they make that commitment, you know, to us, that's where I start going to work, um, you know, and, and it's, that's also one of the other things, too, I guess, with, you know, with the locations, a lot of my kids, I don't get to see in person. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I, you know, a lot of it is I got to trust other people. Uh, and, but I built very, I built good relationships with people that, you know, I can trust them. You know, you being one of those people that, you know, when that I can trust, you know, between the video and and whoever's telling me about them, you know, that I can trust them. But it is always that, you know, it's 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 so fun those first couple of days, like when you go pick up a kid at the airport, you know, I mean, because I've had it happen before where it's like, yeah, coach, he's, you know, six, seven and, you know, go to the airport and, you know, here comes a, you know, six, two kid, you know, coming off, you know, get, you know, getting off. And so, you know, but then. But then, you know, I see so much video of these kids and I watch these kids and then getting them here and then, you know, because they all want to get in the gym right away. I mean, some of these kids I pick up at, a, you know, 1130 at night, you know, and they're like, coach, are we able to, you know, can we go in the gym? You know, and I want to get them in there too, because I want to start working with them and, and see what they, you know, see what matches so I can give an evaluation. And, and basically that's what, what I started doing last year was I built my own little packet, my recruit packet. And I basically wanted to fill it with as much information as possible on my guys. And so what we start doing is we start, you know, when they get here on campus, we weigh them, we get their height, their real height. Uh, We do it with shoes, without shoes. We do wingspan. uh, And then we do some, we do some weightlifting and some speed exercises and kind of some drafts combine things. Mm -hmm. And we get those measurements when we're there. Then once we get about a month and a half, two months in a season, we redo those tests. And one that's, that's, that's very good for the kids because then they can kind of see, you know, when they can only, you know, bench 140 twice, you know, when they get on campus, but after a month they're doing it, you know, they're able to put up 12 reps. All of a sudden they notice, oh man, those hours in the weight room are really paying off. This is, you know, this is great. But then the other thing is I also list that on the chart because I email blast every week every coach in the country. Mm. I, I, it, it took me and my staff a long time, but we basically created a database with, with every college coach 
and it didn't matter what level. And I got and we got their email addresses, and then I blasted them every week, and I and I sent that information out there with with information on the guys, film, my evaluation, kind of the level that they're at. So then that way, you know, I don't have, you know, uh, a the you know, a division you know three coach looking at a guy that's getting recruited by you know mid majors because I don't want to waste coaches' time, and so I, I I give them as much of an evaluation as I can and and give them all that information so then that way they have as much access and one thing i started doing too is 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 adding our film to these games and and it worked out really well because you know especially later in the years the year went on especially last year was so tough as the year went on i was getting you know calls from coach that were like hey coach i've been you know getting your emails for the last you know month and you know all of a sudden our recruiting has changed so you know a month ago they weren't looking at us you know, but then all of a sudden things change and then they're thinking, oh, dude, this guy's in my email box every week. All right. Let me see what he's got. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so, uh, but, but, it, but it works out great because, and then I tell coaches too, like, listen, you know, when I, when I get some film on guys and I'll send it out, I'll, you know, if I get kids that, you know, I, I think where their level is going to be, I'll send, I'll send some film out to coaches, but I'll also send it with, Hey, I haven't seen this kid in person yet. Like you're seeing the same thing I do. So I'm not going to sell you on something other than what I have and, and when, what I'm being told by his coaches. And then when they get here, then we start our evaluations and then I can give a, you know, then I can give a much better, you know, evaluation of, you know, of where the kid is and, and who we can recruit to. And that's kind of, you know, the big thing is you don't want to send, you know, a list of, you know, 15 kids to one school, you know, say, Hey, all 15, you know, and, and that's the other thing I do is with the email too. I also tell them, Hey, if you have, you know, anything that you're looking for, let me know. And I'll, you know, specifically send you that and trying to kind of match up with each school, what their needs are mm. and, and what I have available. Yeah. That's a lot of work, man. That database, I think every, it seems like every, a lot of prep schools and college programs build those on their own. I wonder if there's one resource out there that has all that. I know. I, I, I thought about that as I was doing it. I was like, man, I don't know if this is, exists. Maybe I can make an app, you know, for this. Cause this, yeah, it was, uh, it, it was time to, and then at the end of the year, you know, and you know, come April, March when everybody's changing jobs, mm-hmm. you know, I'm on hoop dirt every day tracking. Yeah. All right. Oh, this guy left, this guy left. All right. Need a new email for this guy. <laughs> so, uh, so, so it's time consuming, but it's so productive. You know, once we got that original, you know, instead of looking for, you know, 1300 coaches now, you know, maybe it's, you know, one or two a week that we got to change emails on. But now that I could, you know, now that I have that and I can send this info out, it makes it so worth it because, you know, I'm just building those lines of communication and then, and then, you know, and the exposure part. And that's the, you know, that's the other thing that I can, you know, that I tell the kids is, you know, I'll, I'll get you in front of coaches because again, it goes back to the scholarship thing. When a coach comes to the gym to watch us work out or when they come to a game, they're not recruiting me. They're not watching me. They're looking at you. Mm-hmm. So you're the guy that, that, that when that ball goes up in the air, you're the one that has to go get that scholarship. So that's why I can't promise you because I don't know what you're going to do. Um, but I'm going to get you in front of coaches. And, you know, like I said, we, you know, we, our, our guys are at every single level and uh, you know, just having, you know, letting them know that, Hey, we're going to have coaches from, from, from all over see you this year. So, you know, that's what determines. And that's why I tell some of these coaches to, I'm like, you know, every kid has an, you know, an idea of, you know, where the, I have an idea of their level, but you know, all these kids have, you know, an idea as well. But, you know, one of my big things is when, you know, when kids, you know, say, you know, yeah, I'm a D one, you know, I'm a D one, I'm a D one player. How many offers do you have? Well, none. So you're not, you're not a division one guy yet, you know, and that's, and that's, and that's a hard thing for these kids is, is, is that's what it is it's it's swallowing that kind of pride and and not knocking their confidence but they 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 need to realize how hard this is it is not easy to get a scholarship especially at the level that these kids all want to go we've had some really good players that have come through here and they've they've either you know they've left and they've struggled you know hats off or you know some of them haven't gotten things and it's, it's, it's that grind. And, and some of them get here and they realize they think they want to do it, 
but they want the Instagram likes, you know, they want the, they want the attention, you know, if that, they don't want the work and the, and the grind that really goes into it. And it's very eye opening for, for a lot of guys when they get here of, Hey, this is actually really difficult. And then if their first kind of wake up call to this is meeting their teammates and seeing, Oh, wow. I got some, I got some competition around me. There's some, there's, there's, there's some pretty good guys here. And then, you know, and then getting those guys to buy into, Hey, that's not your competition, right? right. That's your teammate. You guys, you, you, you guys are going to grind with each other every day to make each other better and, and getting the team aspect for them, you know, to understand, you know, that, Hey, when, when the team does well, that's when coaches notice us, you know, because college coach, and I try to be as honest with all my players that I can about, about the whole recruiting process. And, you know, one of those things is, you know, when we, the style that we play, I like to play fast. We like to get up and down. We like to get shots up. And, and one of those reasons are we could, we get more shots. And when you can get more shots up, guys, are, guys don't have to worry about being selfish. You know, um, I don't know if you can tell, I got my big bear in the back. I'm a big UNC guy. Uh, I get to, you know, I've been able to, I've had the, you know, pleasure and honor of being able to work camp down there. And, and so that secondary break and that, that speed of play is, is, is what we do. And, you know, it's, it's no now, you know, coaches know what we're running, you know, cause I've been running it. And, but like I said, you know, when, when you can play fast and, and you make kids, you know, share the ball and, and, and when they understand our, our offense isn't built for one guy to get 10 shots and everybody else gets two or three, everybody's going to get opportunities because, we're trying to be in attack mode, attack mode. And the other thing it does that when we play, when we create more possessions and we create more shots is guys can put up better numbers. Hmm. And a lot of people don't want to talk about that sense is, I'm sorry, but college coaches, they ask for your statistics and, and, and they want to know your numbers. So when, when, when guys are able to come and they're able to put up good numbers and and against the competition that we play, it really stands out. And so kind of creating a system where, you know, guys can be successful and, you know, again, not, not feel like they're in competition with their teammates. Uh, you know, that, that, that's what does well for us because, you know, as, as far as, you know, guys that come in here, you know, I'm not getting high major D ones calling saying, Hey, I want to put my kid there, you know, or, you know, or, you know, a, you know, these big, you know, a, you coach, Hey, I want to get there a lot of our guys are under the radar for whatever reason, um, whether it was they didn't play circuit AU, uh, you know, maybe they were, you know, at a smaller high school where, you know, or public school where coaches aren't going into those gyms anymore. And, and for whatever reason, you know, those kids are getting they're kind of looked over and that's how we kind of built our reputation of, of being, you know, tough, hard nosed competitors and, and that's the thing that I tell kids and I tell parents college coaches, they got to win basketball games. Those are their jobs and their livelihoods. If those guys don't win, they don't get to keep their job. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for guys that are going to help them win games. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you have to do. And, and as a player, that's, that's the one thing that you have to do is, is you got to look at yourself and say, okay, what, you know, what are the, what are the things that I can do to help this team? And what are the things that I can do well? Because not everybody needs a score, you know, not every, you know, college coach will come in. Hey coach, I need a guy that can play D. I need a guy that can rebound. You know, we've got, we've got three, you know, I got two 20 point scores on my roster and they're sophomores. They're not going anywhere. I don't need a guy that's going to take balls. I need a guy that can help create for them. So getting guys to understand too, that, you know, that it isn't just about, you know, scoring that, it, that, that there's so much to this game. There's so many different pieces that, you know, coaches are looking for that just kind of find, you know, find that area that you can be, you know, good at. And this is something that working a bunch of camps, uh, I actually heard this down, you know, at Carolina camp a couple of years ago and they're like, and it was uh, you know, high school coach that, you know, he North Carolina high school coach that's got 10 state championship rings and has them every, you know, and has, you know, just an unbelievable resume. And he, you know, he's sitting there talking. He's like, I tell guys, like, you, you got to be great at one thing. Be great at one thing. You know, too many kids are trying to be, you know, they, they, they're they trying trying to be great, great at all these things. And they don't focus enough on, you know, on, on one area. You know, 
if you're the best shooter on your team, the coach is going to find time for you. If you're the best defender on a team, you're going to get time. If you're the best rebound, if you're the guy that does one thing really, really great and the other things you do, you know, like obviously you can't be, you know, a great shooter and not play a lick of D, um, you know, you got to you got to be able to play those things. But if you can find just one thing that makes you stand out and what you do, that's what makes you more recruitable and attractive to these coaches. And at the end of the day, that's that's what it is. And and I honestly feel like, you know, I went to school for sport management and marketing and and sales were those those were the areas where I did very well. And I feel like that stuff's helped me here because that's what I'm doing with my players is I'm marketing these guys. College coaches have a need. I have that need. And now it's just all about finding the right fit and right match. Yeah, absolutely. And two things I want to pipe in on that. You mentioned that uh, kids want a guarantee. And you might spend this money. You might spend full tuition at a prep school. That is not a guarantee that you're going to get the college you want or a scholarship. So it, I, everyone's very upfront in this business. And you're and being in a prep school coach. Everyone's usually pretty upfront letting people know that, but a lot of kids and families don't get it. Secondly is, uh, yeah, that first day of practice when the big fish in little pond gets to, uh, their prep school open gyms and they see their competition. Um, if they do come from a small school or a place where the competition is not as good, they've got a quick, uh, realization of, Oh, I see. These are the guys I'm competing with for these scholarship spots at the next level. And that's sometimes that's better than even saying it is them just experiencing it and being like, yes. yeah, this, my teammates better. I'm probably not at his level. Let me realign a little bit what college I'm looking at. So those are two things I like. Let me ask you this. You talk about competition and you play in the NEPSAC triple A league. Tell us what, how that helps you guys out and what makes it so special. It's just so when I first, I didn't know much about the prep before I got in here. Um, but I had heard, you know, I knew of the Brewsters and the New Hamptons, Northfields, you know, I knew, I knew those names, you know, from being in high school and, you know, and, and, and watch guys, like I said, I'm a huge, I'm, I'm a college basketball junkie. I just, I love everything about college basketball. Uh, you know, and that's what I tell my guys. So I'm like, Hey, watch the NBA for entertainment, watch college basketball to get better. And, and, that, and that's, and that's what I do. And, and, and I just love college basketball and uh, the, the, the amount of players that have come, you know, out of this league. And that's how I knew a lot of those teams was seeing those guys in college. And so to be able to have the opportunity to, to want to coach against some of these historic programs, you know, is, is something that, that it's awesome for me and I don't take for granted and getting to coach against some of these guys that are coaching that, you know, and, and then have been doing so well, you know, like I said, you know, you know, coach Witt at, you know, at, at Bridgeton has been everywhere and been doing it forever. And, and to have the opportunity to, you know, to, to coach against them a couple of times a year. And the same thing with coach Smith, the, you know, at Brewster and, and, and Espo and, and all these coaches that, that, that I get to coach against. And some of them, you know, some of them, when I beat them, it's, it's, you know, when we win games, I, like I said, I don't take that for granted. I don't take it lightly because it's a, it's hard work. It's very hard, you know, and it's very hard to beat these teams, you know, especially some of these, you know, these, these national, you know, championship contenders, it's tough, but that's part of what I tell these guys is that's the opportunity part that I talk about. You see all those guys at this school that we're going to play. You, some of these guys that have scholarships, right? That's what you want go show these coaches that you can play at that level. That's, that's where you get those chances. And that's, what's so special about this league is you're playing college basketball players. You're not, most of these guys when they come from their high school, their club team, you might be lucky to play, you know, a, you know, one or two kids on the other team that are going to play college. When you're here in the teams that we play, you're playing guys that are going to school, you know, and, and especially at the AAA level, you know, you're looking at probably playing, you know, three to five division one guys every night. And that's what kind of drives me and, and, and drives, it helps me drive my guys because we want what those guys have and what, you know, and what they're getting for and, and being able to have that competition just kind of elevates everybody. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's night in and night out in this, you know, in, the, in this league, it's just, it's unbelievable. The talent that's come through here and again, you know, the, 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 the coaches and, and, and how well they do. And it is, it's, it's, it's fun. It is, it's absolutely fun. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's, we've had a lot of the coaches on, we're going to have them all on eventually, but yeah, it's, it's to those that have not been to new England and seen the triple a uh, games with one team against another, it's, it's just sometimes can be five D one guys against five D one guys. And that's not uncommon. So uh, pretty good with that. Here's a fun news segment of the show, Dan, it's called famous alumni from your prep school. And I dug up two, and then you can add uh, any others. I'm leaving off this one. But first, Mihailo Vasic. Tell me who he is and why he's famous right now. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so he recently, uh, Serbian kid, uh, won a bronze medal in the uh, in the Olympics for the three on three. Yep. Which to me, one thing that makes that so awesome too is he's forever a first. You know. A, you know bronze medal you're the you, you're the first first ones to do it you guys are at the top of that list for every olympics on here out so one such a historical you know accomplishment and i wasn't here uh you know when he was at lee uh he played for coach igor um but i've i've, I've kept a very good relationship with you know with, with, with coach igor and so i was able to talk with him a little bit about him and then a lot of our teachers here were here with him Okay. And they were, you know, and then they remember him and, you know, and had some things. So it, it was, it, it, it was cool because, you know, obviously being, you know, a U.S. guy, when I'm watching the Olympics, I'm, you know, I'm cheering for the home team, you know, but it, you know, it made it really cool to be able to, to watch those games and, you know, and be, you know, you know, so involved and, and, and watching them. And it was, it was just a really cool, uh, you know, thing that happened and, and, he, and he was great. You know, we reached out to him and, you know, that's thing too is, I reach, you know, I try, I try to do my best with keeping up with our alumni and the guys that were here before me, you know, that don't know who I am. And, you know, and I just, you know, kind of blindly reach out with an email or message them on Facebook, you know, wherever I can find them. And, uh, you know, he's, he, he, he's doing really well. And that's just, you know, that, that, that was awesome to watch. Yeah. No, it's pretty great having a, a medalist from your school. Uh, <laughs> this one's personal, but Lewis Wang. <laughs> Lewis Wang, my man, Lou. Oh, so Lewis, uh, so Lewis was here, you know, he was part of that team that was my first year here. And, and the, the awesome part about Lewis is, you know, Lewis started on the high school team here, you know, uh, and, and he just, because I, I knew him as, you know, the prep player. And, you know, so by the time I, I got here, he was a darn good player. You know, he could play. And I was like, wait, he was, he started on that, you know, on the, you know, he was, you know, he was playing a younger team and, and it didn't take me long to realize why, because that kid lived in the gym. He lived in the gym and, you know, and, and it was, it, it's just so great to see, you know, his work, you know, hard work payoff. You know, he, you know, he started, went to, you know, went to UMaine, walked on there, but didn't, he just, he, he, he wanted to play. That's all he wanted to do. He didn't want, you know, some of these other guys, you know, that, like I said, you know, the Instagram likes and, you know, all this stuff. I wanted to, Lou just wanted to play basketball. Um, and, I, and I'm so pumped for him that, you know, now, you know, he, he, he's, he's, he's turning pro. He's, he's going to yep. play professionally and was just drafted. Uh, I believe it was number six overall, uh, you know, in the league that he's going to be playing in. I believe it is the league in Taiwan. Yep. It's the Taiwan pro league. Yep. And, and so I'm so pumped for him. And, and he's been a guy too, that I've been able to, you know, for that first year, you know, that I was, you know, here with guys, there's, you know, probably, you know, five or six guys that I speak with, you know, you know, every other week, semi-weekly, that I'm always keeping up with Lewis is, you know, is, is one of those guys. And, you know, I couldn't be happier for a guy, like I said, that, you know, I mean, Lou's on the South side of six foot, you know, right about six foot. And, you know, and that was, you know, one of those things that, you know, he had kind of heard, he had kind of heard and, okay never you know all right i'll just i'll i'll show him and so just to see where you know where he came from to where he's at now is it's it's just awesome to see and that's 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 one of the best parts of this job is it's 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 good and bad is for the most part you know it's rare that i'll get a kid for more than a year you know so i don't get a lot of time with my guys and and that's one of the things i love about coaching that's why i got into coaching is, is building relationships with these players and and then watching them do well but to be able to watch them when they leave and what they do you know so to be able now i can track you know i could track lewis's you know pro career uh you know we had an, another kid uh for my first year just signed pro yesterday and you know to be able to watch these guys that are playing pro 
and then you know we just added we got three guys from this year's team you know that are that are going to be playing you know d1 and so i'll be able you know those you know that's i it's, you know, six or seven guys, you know, now that, you know, when I'm, when I'm watching all my college basketball games to be able to watch my guys, you know, guys that I had here on, you know, on the games and watch them grow and see how much better they've gotten. You know, that's just such a cool payoff about this job is, is watching what your guys do when they leave. Yeah. And just full disclosure on Lewis. Um, that The reason I laughed when I brought him up is that he was one of the first kids. He was the first kid from Taiwan I brought to the States and one of the first players ever placed at prep school. And yeah, him going from uh, Lee learning his English to, to going D1 was a huge uh, accomplishment for him. So real proud of him. Is there any other alumni, uh, one other big time one or one I didn't mention that uh, comes to mind? Uh, probably the biggest thing is, is Yusu Endoy. Um, you know, Yusu was here, you know, say that he was here before me, but he uh, went to St. Bonaventure, um, mm-hmm. played in the G League when it was the G League at the time. And, uh, and actually got some time with the Spurs. Okay. Uh, you know, so, so, so we placed a guy, you know, in the NBA and he's now, uh, I, I try to keep up with, with his league and where he's at, but I know he's playing, you know, professionally over in Europe now. Um, and he, uh, he's, he's from Senegal and uh, he played in the world cup, you know, a couple of years. So that was another cool thing is I was able, you know, that was a team I was able to cheer for and watch. Um, you know, during that World Cup. So he's still out there. And I mean, he's, I mean, there's a couple of days where he had like the dunk of the day, you mm-hmm. know, and doing stuff. So for a kid that was here, you know, eight or nine years ago, he's he, he's still doing very well for himself. Perfect. Speaking of that, Lee Academy is, no, oh, real quick. That was our segment this week on famous alumni from the prep school <laughs> coach we're talking to now. So thanks for that little segment there. Uh, that's just a segue, Dan, ignore that. Uh, so that's one thing you mentioned, your international players, such as Lewis and these other two guys, Senegal and Serbia. You, you every year have an international team. What are the benefits of that? And then what are the challenges? The, the benefits of that is, is one thing with, you know, when, when you get these international guys, they don't have the, they don't have the expected cater to me that, are, that, that the U.S. kids have. They're not, you know, they don't come in, you know, asking for a lot, you know, they're just like, can I get into the gym? Uh, and so they, they kind of have a different mentality. Um, you know, when, when it comes to that, uh, they don't have a lot of the expectations. I mean, there are some of the expectations in the sense of when they come over, a lot of them are thinking it's, it's division one or bust mm-hmm. because there's kind of the stigma from them of like, Hey, you know, you know, division three is not good. I'm not, I can't play that. I can't go, you know, and I've been told this by kids. I can't go home and say I'm playing division three. And I say, Hey bud, I played division three. I was pretty good. I like to think, you know, like, so it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's okay. You know, so kind of get them to understand the different levels um, of American basketball, you know, over here. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love though, is they bring a different flavor of the game. They mm-hmm. play a different way. And whether it's our guys from Europe or guys from Asia or guys from Africa, it, it, they all have, they all have a different style of play. And so getting to mix that with the U S guys is, is, is kind of what's, what, what makes us us in the sense of, you know, getting to blend those styles and, and the U S guys can pick up things from them and, uh, you know, cause one thing is, is, is they play, you know, a different style of game. It's, it's a little bit more fundamental. It's a little bit more deliberate, you know, in what they do, you know, not as much, you know, flash in the sense of, Hey, it's, you know, let's get, you know, everything that we do is, you know, is more with a purpose, you know, where, you know, U S guys can be a little bit more flash, a little bit, you know, so, so they come in a little bit more, you know, fundamentally sound, um, one of the difficulties though of is getting them used to that speed mm. of the game because the game here is much faster and that's what they you know after the first week you know that's that's one of the things you know when i sit down in our individual meetings with them is you know hey how you know what do you think how you thinking is you know coaches this, this this is a lot faster and that's one thing i have to let them know too is hey look we we play fast anyway you know we play we play faster than a lot of teams that we play so this is something that you you know that, that you're getting used to um and not every college coach is going to play, you know, super fast. And 
Uh, and that's what I try to tell these, you know, the, the, the kids too. And, you know, sometimes we will slow things down and do things. And, and that's the other thing that I need to do is I have to be flexible with my style of play because I need to make it fit the guys that I have. Um, you know, and like, for instance, last year, we didn't have a whole lot of uh, international players in because, you know, they weren't able to get in last year. Um, you know, so last year was a little bit different. Uh, you know, we didn't have as many this year, uh, you know, we're back up probably close to around 50, 50, um, you know, with what we have. Uh, but it is, it's, 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 it's so cool because just getting the different styles together of play and that's, what's crazy. I mean, you see it in the, you saw in the Olympics with, you know, the U S team struggling with, with some of these international styles of play and, and how they played. So it's really good that our guys, you know, can kind of rub off on each other and they're able to pick up some of those different things. Um, the other thing with a lot of these international guys too is what, what I like about that is they see the game different because those guys will play a lot of older people. You know, they'll play, they're not playing high school ball. You know, they're not in ninth grade playing ninth graders. They're not 10th, you know, you know, those kids are playing in leagues, you know, and they're playing, you know, they're come playing, you know, grown men. And, and what it does is it makes them, you know, a little bit, it, it heightens their IQ in a sense of, you know, every year I'll get one or two kids, you know, of, of, from my international pool that come over. And I'm just like, how does, like, how does he see that? How does this kid, you know, and, and, and that's what it is. It's from playing, you know, in some of those, 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 those different leagues, you know, they have a different system of, of, you know, it's not high school AAU over there. It's, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot, of, it's, it's, it's club team, you know, club ball and team ball and, you know, so you you get thrown into the fire a lot earlier, you know, over there. So it is, it's just been, it, it's been fun because I haven't worked with a lot of, you know, in, when I was in, you know, in college, we had a couple international guys at each school. Um, but, uh, you know, this was my first real flavor of like all the, all the international guys. And, and even, you know, when you get guys just because they're international, but like I said, you know, from different, you know, even like European guys, you know, Latvian players are playing different than Lithuanian guys and Serbia. They all have their own different, you know, type of play. And so, and even getting those guys, you know, together and picking off, um, you know, of, of, of what they do and how they, how they play the game and how they see the game uh, is just really awesome. And, and I love it. Yeah. And speaking of that, you know, when you, when you recruit your guys, like you said earlier in the conversation, you don't always see them in person. You're only seeing film, sometimes highlights. So really, until they get on the court, you don't know what you're going to get. Tell me, uh, during your coaching tenure, Dan, who's shown up and been the biggest surprise for you? Um, probably the biggest, the biggest surprise was, was Mikey West. In the sense of, we knew he was going to be good. Mikey came in, and I, I, I had the pleasure of getting to have him for two years. You know, I got him. He's, you know, right about a six-foot point guard, and he killed it immediately his first year. You know, he was kind of – he was on that, you know, board of, okay, we've got some post-grad guards. You know, he's going to probably be at the, you know, at the back end. And, you know, he had come through, you know, my associate head coach, Coach Doc, you know, had, had coached Mikey – you know, since he was just a little guy and, you know, we had, you know, where we see guys and, and everything's changing every day, you know, every day the board changes. Um, but, you know, he was a guy that in the preseason, we thought, okay, probably, you know, be more of a role player. We'll kind of get him in a little bit this year, you know, and then hopefully have him, you know, kind of be the leader the next year. Uh, he wasn't having that, you know, and, and he immediately, and, his team, you know, his teams were winning drills and his teams were winning, you know, scrimmages. And then when it came time for games, he turned the light on even more. You know, he was a kid that was working his butt off in practice and, and trying to win everything. And then when it came to games, he shined even brighter. And that was because, and this is what I try to tell kids that we don't want to build false confidence. You know, we're not going to sit here and just say, oh, because we showed up. Because, because we're in the gym at 6 a.m., you know, oh, we're going to beat these guys. No, because there's somebody else in the gym at 6 a.m. too. You ain't the only guy in the gym at 6 a.m. And, and so for him, he never had, he just never had that mentality. Of, he kind of had just tunnel vision of, hey, I got a goal. This is what I want to do. And just watching the work that he put in 
and then the numbers that he was putting up and the teams that we were beating because of what he was doing. And then when he came back for his post grad year, it was even more. And, you know, I felt I was absolutely gutted for the kid last year when, you know, he's a Bethune Cookman, you know, and they canceled their season. Uh-huh. And this kid couldn't wait to get on a court and to be one of those teams, you know, could do it. And then seeing some of his teammates play, he was supporting them. He was, you know, he did everything. But, you know, I'd have conversations with him. You could tell the kid, you know, it just, he wanted to be out there. But he didn't, he didn't let that become an excuse. And he still, and that's why he's a name that not a lot of people know because he didn't get to play last year. And I have every bit of confidence that, People are going to know who he is. And, and what's going to happen is people are going to call me up after seeing what he does and say, coach, how'd you, how'd that kid get out of new England? Good question. It happens. Yeah. Good question. You know, but, and it was, but it was one of those things where he was, you know, he was small, you know, he's not, he's not blowing you away with his size. He's not blowing you away with his athleticism. Uh, you know, a sense of, you know, he's not, you know, going to go, you know, when they'll dunk, you know, anything like that, but he just plays a game very well. And, and once he starts playing, you're just like, this kid has a different, he's got, he's got that it factor, you know? And, and one of the things that I go back to is, and it's, and it's me building confidence in my guys and my coach's strategy ain't for, you know, it's not for every coach, you know, in a sense of, but like, I know what Mikey was able to do. And by the time he became that post-grad, you know, I remember we were playing in Springfield at a, at a showcase and he's coming across half court and this is early on in the game and he's coming across half court and he's in a little bit of transition. I said, you know, and I whisper, I say, Hey, I said, pull up wherever you want, pull up. And he five feet behind pulls up and missed. And I could hear people like, Oh, why was he, you know, why wasn't that coach yelling at him? He was taking that, you know, that shot. But I kind of know how Mikey operates and I know, and, 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 and how he feels. And so a couple possessions later, say to, I said, do it, do it again, do it again. Boom, drilled it. Comes down a court in the next like two or three possessions, does the same thing. Then all of a sudden you see these people talk like, oh, okay, we see, you know, we see why. But he was doing it. He did that to every, he surprises everybody. Because when you go on a court, you're not expecting him to be one of the best players on the floor. And, and he did. And he, you know, like I said, I was just so gutted for the kid last year. And so this year he's going to surprise more people because He's not going to be on a lot of people's radar. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see, see what he does, but yeah, in, in, in my time here, he was probably, you know, the biggest surprise in a sense of like where we thought he was going to be to what he ended up, you know, doing. Yeah. Perfect. Dan, it's time for the lightning lightning round. We're going to buzz through some quick questions here. Right. All right. Biggest win of your career. Oh, I would say probably the biggest win was, uh, at New Hampton. Oh, wow. That was, that's, that's one of those, you know, I, I believe they were ranked at the, you know, they were ranked at the time. Um, it was my, I think it was my first year. It was my first, I think it was my first year here. And, you know, nobody was, ex, nobody's expecting us to, you know, to, to, to beat them and do those things. And, you know, our guys go in and uh, just, you know, just played as absolutely hard as we could, you know, we won on a buzzer beater, you know, so that helped. And, you know, we got video and, you know, and I'll watch it every once in a while because I got like our kids reactions to that mm-hmm. game was what made it, you know, most free. Cause there's a questionable call down the end that, uh, that we as a team didn't like, but there was still time on the clock. So, you know, had to, you know, had to get the guys over and say, Hey, we still got a few seconds. And, uh, you know, the point guard, you know, at the time was, you know, Jordan Means, uh, New York kid that just super, super fast kid, super, super competitor. And I was like, you know, I was like, you know, Jordan, if we can get you just run across speed, I'm like, can you get down a court in three seconds and go get a shot up? Yep. And he did. And he, you know, he got, and so that was, that was, that was a big, just because of, you know, where they were ranked at the time, like where they were at the time were, you know, n- you know, newer and up and coming, and, and the way that, you know, we were able to win that, that, that was a bit, because those, you know, that, you know, New Hampton, that was, that was a team that I, that I knew before I ever got here, uh, you know, because they'd had some, you know, some Carolina guys, Rashad McCants, Wes Miller, uh, you know, guys that had gone to New Hampton that, be, you know, that ended up being, 
you know, Carolina guys. So I knew New Hampshire. So, so that was, you know, and then when you walk through the halls and you see their pictures and everything, and, you know, for guys, it can be intimidating, you know, but, but, you know, we, you know, we were able to come out with a, with, with a huge win there. So that's, that, that's one that like, that, that was a big one for me. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, how about the best player you've ever coached against? Uh, best player I coached against as, as far as prep players, like when they were playing against us, uh, you know, three names come to mind. One, the late Terrence Clark. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause I coached against him for a couple of years and he just beat me up every, every year. You know, he was just, you know, that, 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 that kid was, you know, he was, he was fun to watch you know, and, and, and his skills were so unbelievable. And we played them the last, the, you know, his, his last year there, he's taken the ball out of bounds and really at kind of this point, he's not super into the game in a sense of like, he's not turned it on yet. And one of my players is sitting there and starts talking to him and me and my staff, cause he turned around and goes, you know, I said, what did you just say? You know, like, the, and I said, I told my kid, like, I'm going to send him to the locker room. We don't need, we don't need a motivated Terrence Clark here. And that's all he needed. And then he just got cooking. Um, and so, and just, you know, just the absolute talent and raw talent that that kid had was just, you know, unbelievable to watch. And, you know, it's just such a tragedy and so heartbreaking, you know, to see what happened because, you know, the sky was the limit for the kid because he was charismatic too. And, you know, but, you know, he stood out and then, uh, you know, one kid that did a lot of damage to me here, you know, Cole Swider, uh, you know, from St. Andrews, you know, when, when, he, cause I, same thing, I saw him a couple years, but you know, he came, you know, they came up to St. Andrews, like, you know, they'll come up to Lee and, you know, I think he hung 39 on us. We were down 22 at the half and scored like 70 in the second half and came back and won. And so that was a big one for us to, you know, getting that, but the performance that that kid put on there, you know, was, 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 was unbelievable. Um, so those are, those are like two of the guys, um, Marcus Zegrakowski at, mm-hmm. you know, from Hilton. He was another kid that that was, he was a kid that I would go watch when we weren't playing. Like I enjoy watching him because of how he played the game and, and say, take, you know, he's another kid that torched us, you know, that just did, you know, at some points, you know, I got lost, you know, I coach like, man, you know, you just, everything about, you know, this, the, the way that he played. So, you know, those, those are the, those are the guys that, you know, really kind of stood out to me. Yeah. How about uh, when you're not coaching, what are your hobbies? Oh, geez. Uh, I'm a big, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big sports junkie. Like I said, college basketball, um, but I'm a diehard, you know, I'm a, I'm a New York guy. So I'm a, you know, New York Yankees, New York Knicks, New York Giants, New York Rangers. Uh, thank you thankfully for the internet and everything, even being in Maine, I'm still able to watch all my Yankee games. Um, you know, so, so I'm a lot of times I'm, I'm, I'm on my TV, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glued to that. Cause I, I, I follow all my sports teams. Uh, but living here in Maine now I've, 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 I've I'm adapting to the lifestyle, you know, uh, I bought myself one of those side-by-sides, you know, ATVs, mm-hmm. you know, so that's been fun to, you know, to kind of drive around here with, um, but yeah, no, that's, you know, that's, that, that's really, I mean, sports are my life, you know, in a sense of, you know, that, especially, you know, all my family, you know, I got family kind of scattered all over. So, um, you know, getting to travel, you know, and, 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 and go see them, you know, when I can, but, you know, for the most parts I'm busy, but, uh, you know, just, uh, sports in general or, or just life. Yeah. And lastly, uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? Oh man, I'm such a big movie guy that, uh, man, uh, I'm just going to go with the one that came to the, came to the top of my head, the departed. Oh man. I can't, whenever that's on, I can't turn it off then. Oh yeah. That one. That's just that. Yeah. That movie. I remember I was in college at the time and going to college, you know, just outside of Boston, you know, and everything there and that, yeah, that movie, I think I saw a couple times in theaters too. That was, that's that's at the top of my list for sure oh that's a good one well dan uh for those that are listening right now i just want to give a a quick uh description of your background you are in maine and in the background i see big old pine trees there so you have a nice uh, backdrop there of (laughs) 
but I, yeah. what Maine is like, it's a lot of woods and, uh, and, and greenery. So, but Hey, thanks so much for coming on the podcast today. Where can uh, people reach out and find you? Uh, I am on, I'm on all social media. I have, I have, I have personal accounts. Uh, I have, you know, we have Lee Academy accounts. Uh, I'm on, you know, Twitter coach Dan Haynes, uh, and our, our Lee Academy prep hoops. Uh, so I'm, I'm all over the place. I am, I am very accessible. Um, so that's, then that's one thing that I try to pride myself on is I've always, you know, got my phone and stuff that I try to one way or another, uh, it's, I'm not hard to get in touch with. Yeah, I concur with that. So <laughs> you're very good at being a communicative, which is great. So, well, Dan uh, Haynes, head coach at NEPSEC AAA School, Lee Academy in Maine. It's a pleasure to have you on today. Thank you very much. And I wish you the best of luck this season. Awesome. Thank you very much. And, and, and like I said, I really appreciate you having me on here and, and you know, talking your ear off about, uh, about, about Lee Academy and, and, and what we're doing here and, and uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, looking forward to getting the guys back on campus here in another couple of weeks and, and, and getting right to work. So, Perfect. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks so much. Thank much. Go Pandas. Yeah, go Pandas. Well, hey, if uh, you'd like this, please be sure to subscribe on YouTube or any of the podcast platforms. And we will see you again next week. Thanks so much.